Hello, GED students. I was scrolling through this lovely Facebook group that I admin, and I saw that someone had posted this question here in the group looking for some assistance. And right away, I recognized it as one of the questions from my website. We are going to take a look and work this example that she struggled with as well as one more. And we're going to do it with our TI-30XS GED calculator by our side. Because anytime you do anything like this on the test, you would get the calculator. And there's two ways to use the calculator to make this super easy. So I'm going to be a little weird here. I'm going to simplify it by hand for those of you who are taking a test other than the GED where you have to know how to do your calculations by hand. But after that, I'm going to show you two ways to do the same work in the calculator. All right, here we go. Okay, so first problem says, what is the value of the expression 3 minus x squared all over x plus 3 when x is equal to negative 1? Now, a lot of students see this problem get really scared by all those x's, but I'm not scared by all those x's because x is no longer a mystery. Let me show you what I mean. They told me what x is. It's not like I have to go solve for or figure out x. They said, hey, x is negative 1. So that means in this original expression here, this big nasty thing, every time I see an x, I can trade it out. Mathematicians call that substituting. I can trade it out for a negative 1 because that's what x is, negative 1. Now, the way you do this is going to be super duper important. Here's the biggest mistake students do. I'm going to do it in red. So you know, don't do it this way. Don't put this in your notes. Just look at what I'm doing here. A lot of students will say, okay, well, there's a three. They see the three and a minus, and they haven't gone wrong yet. But here's where they go wrong. And then they just put negative one squared and do it like this. And you need to be super duper careful. I said it in the evaluating expressions lesson video, and I say it in just about every example problem that we have a negative number. But when you plug negative numbers, so negative numbers, into exponential expressions, uh, something with an exponent on it, you must, 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 must use parentheses. If you write it like this and then just keep going negative one plus three over here, but you just keep going like this and don't have the parentheses around negative one, you will get a wrong answer in your calculator. You'll get a wrong answer if you do it by hand. So I'm not gonna do it that way. Uh, let's erase this then and do it the right way. Okay, so it looks basically exactly the same thing, okay? So I see my three in my expression, I write three. I see the minus in my expression, I write minus. And then I see the X. So I'm going to trade out that X for a negative one. And it is going to be in parentheses because that negative one is being squared. So anytime you plug a negative value in for a variable that's being raised to a power, you should use parentheses. Now I'll put it over this. Now some people are like, well, do I need the parentheses down here, Kate, with this negative one? Eh. It doesn't actually matter. It won't make a difference adding or subtracting. But if you want to be that kind of student who's safe, you're like, I can't remember when it matters and when it doesn't. It won't be wrong if you just use a parentheses whenever you substitute in a negative. So yeah, if you're thinking there's too much to remember, just always use parentheses and you'll be totally safe. Okay. But again, I don't need them. It's not a big deal. I'll get the same answer either way. Now, if I were going to simplify this by hand, I would need to follow the order of operations. I would need to take care of any groupings first. And please, 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 please remember that the top and bottom of a fraction become natural groupings. So I can work on the top and the bottom separately, individually, before I deal with the fraction itself. So looking up at the top here, the numerator of this fraction, I see two operations here. I see subtraction and I see an exponent. And again, if I'm following the order of operations, I need to deal with any exponents before I deal with addition and subtraction, which is the very last step. So I will deal with the exponent first. This is what I'm doing. Negative one squared. Negative one squared in parentheses now, <laughs> when the whole negative one is in parentheses, means negative one times negative one, which would literally give me a positive one. A negative times a negative is a positive. Now, of course, I haven't used this minus, and I haven't used the three, 
and that's going to be over. Now, since the bottom grouping is totally separate from the top grouping, I'll just do the math down there now. So negative one plus three, like I owe you a dollar and that I get three dollars. Well, I'll pay off what I owe you and I'll have two dollars left. So that gives me positive two. Okay, awesome. I'm almost done. I can keep on going by simplifying the expression on the top. So three minus one is two. And that's still over two. And now I can do the division implied by the fraction. Two divided by two is one. Wonderful. So I simplified this by hand. If you're good at the order of operations, you're good at algebra, you're good at negative, sure, do it by hand. But you know what? <laughs> We get a calculator on the GED, so you might as well use it. So let's look at how I would do this if I was doing it on the calculator. So the first way, the way I like to teach students, because you need this skill for college, you need it, need it, need it for college, is to do the substitution yourself, okay? Do the substitution, trade out the letter for the number, and then just type the entire expression into your calculator. Let me show you what I mean. So if I were to do the substitution myself, again, I'm going to rewrite this expression, but trade out any X values for negative one. So let's erase it so it's not so messy here. There we go. So that's the expression I'm writing. And it's going to look just like it did before. I'll end up with the three and the minus, three and minus. And then because I want to square X, I need to put it in parentheses. And even if you forget the parentheses on your calculator, you'll get a wrong answer. And now I'm going to head over to my TI and just plug the entire expression into my calculator. This lovely calculator they give you on the GED can simplify these order of operations expressions. It has the order of operations programmed into it. So it knows what to do first, second, third, fourth to give you the answer. Okay. Now this entire big expression is a big, ugly fraction. And so I'm going to hit the fraction button first on the calculator. That's an N over D. Now do make sure you get on your screen what I have on my screen. The little horizontal line with the two blinking boxes. If you if yours doesn't look like that, if you get like a diagonal slash, you're in the wrong mode. Hit mode and change your calculator into math print mode. You definitely want to be in math print mode for these complex expressions. And now I can type it exactly the way I see it. Three, now make sure the first one is minus because that's a subtract. And this calculator is a little dumb. It doesn't know subtract from negative, even though we know it's interchangeable, the calculator doesn't. And then use those parentheses, guys. You will get a wrong answer if you don't. And that's negative one. Close the parentheses before you press the X squared button to square it, or again, you'll get the wrong answer. Now see my black box is blinking up top. I want to go down to the bottom. So I'm going to use the down button here. And again, I'm going to type negative one, not minus one, plus three. And it will do the order of operations for me. And boom, 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 boom. I can see that the answer is one. Now that's the way I recommend. This is how I would like you to do it if you're into, actually, you're going to go into college, you want to have good algebra skills, it's really necessary that you can do substitution yourself. However, and this is the big however, your calculator can also do substitution, which means you don't really have to do any work except knowing how to operate the calculator. If you are just like, Kate, I'm here for one thing and one thing only. I want to pass my GED. I'm not going to college. I don't care about my algebra skills. Just please help me pass. Okay, well, let me show you a neat trick. Turns out your calculator can do the substitution for you. So you could literally start with this problem right here and do the, in all the work in your calculator. So let's do it. I'm gonna erase all this jazz and show you how I could have started right from the calculator and never even wrote something down on your scratch paper. And if you're taking the online test, that might be especially helpful because the online scratch pad is really clunky. So here's how it goes. If you want to evaluate expressions in your calculator, you can just program in variables. You can tell the calculator that every time you type X, you want them to sub negative one. Here's how you do it. So I'm going to clear out my calculator, new screen, and I'm going to type in the value negative one. There it is. Now I want to store that variable in my calculator as X. And so what I'll do is I'll press this little STO arrow button that's right next to one. That's the store button. And I'm going to tell it that I want it to store it as X. So right above the store button is the variable button. Hit it just once and it gives you an X. So what I'm telling the calculator is 
from now on, every time I type X, you substitute it out for a negative one. Now press enter so that your calculator knows that information. And it's going to keep that in its memory banks. And now you can just type in the entire expression using X's this time. Let me show you what I mean. And over D button, and I get three minus, and now I want the X, just like I see here, I see three and then minus and then X. Again, I use the variable button for X. That X is supposed to be squared. I'll type the square button. Then I need to get down to the bottom. So I'll press the down arrow. And again, use the variable button for an X and plus three. I programmed in the value. I wrote down the expression. My calculator will do the substitution and the simplification. There it is, boom, I got one. I didn't even have to do scratch work. All I had to do was know how to use my TI. I mean, glorious. Ah, uh, you like that? Okay, let's try another example from the same worksheet in case you need a little more practice. Here's my next example, it's from the same worksheet. And guys, I chose the ones that I chose for a good reason. And that is because they involve negatives and exponents and it's negative as an exponent that screws students up every time. So let's go ahead and take a look. It says, what is the value of C squared D plus CD minus CD squared whew, when C equals negative three and D equals negative two? Okay. I'm just going to do it the two calculator ways this time, okay? I'm going to do it the way I would prefer that you do it first so that we're actually building those algebra skills so you're prepped for college where I substitute and then the calculator simplifies. Here I go. I want to plug in C. I see C, but C is not a mystery. I know what C is. According to this problem, C is negative three. But notice it's being squared. So I must use parentheses. So I'll put the negative three in parentheses and the square outside of it. And now I want D. Now I'm going to use parentheses again, not because D has an exponent, but be, because I know these two things are shoved together, so they're multiplying. So that's times negative two. Now I have my plus sign, plus sign. And again, I see two things multiplying. C and D are multiplying, so I'll use parentheses again. So C is negative three, close parentheses. D is negative two, close parentheses. Now I see this minus, I'll write a minus, and then careful, C is also negative. So I'll use parentheses so that it separates this minus from this negative, and I get negative three, close parentheses. And then D is also a negative, and since it's being squared, I should definitely use parentheses. So I get negative two squared. Lots of negatives here. Be super easy to drop one or two, which is a really common student error, and then you will get a wrong answer. Let's go ahead and type this entire expression into our calculator. So parentheses, negative three, close parentheses, squared. And a lot of students say to me, hey, Kate, can't I just use the time sign instead of the parentheses? Yeah, I would definitely use parentheses when you see parentheses, just because obviously we've seen it already. Parentheses do more than just multiplication. They're much more multifunctional. And so you might only see it as multiplication and it might be doing more than one thing. So anyway, I'll write my expression just the way I see it. So parentheses, negative three, close parentheses, times negative two, close parentheses, minus, now that's between numbers, so I use minus, open parentheses, negative three, close parentheses, open parentheses, whew, negative two, close parentheses, and square it. Holy moly, it comes to zero. Now let's do it the super lazy way as well, where our only goal is to pass this GED, Kate. I'm not going to do any of the substituting myself. I'm not going to do any of the simplifying myself. I'm going to let my calculator handle it all. Okay. So in order to do that, I need to plug in any known values. I need to program them into my calculator. It's the only reason I can do this in my calculator, because I know what C and D are. If I didn't know what C and D were, I wouldn't be able to do this, but I do. I know that C is negative three. So I can order my computer that every time it sees a C to plug in a negative three, let's do that. So again, we type the value negative three. We press the store button to store it as a variable. And then we're going to use the variable button, but you have to keep clicking until you get to C. So let's do it. There it is, C, and now I'm gonna press enter to store that. Now let's store D as negative two, so I type in negative two, press that store button, and I click the variable button until D comes up. Oh, it doesn't have a D. 
Uh oh. Oh, good. I'm glad we had that come up. What if it's a letter you don't have? Well, let's just use a different letter. How about I call it T? It really doesn't matter what letter you use. You just better remember. Okay, I'm going to call all my D's T. Ooh. You guys, I didn't know that it didn't have D's in here. Uh, now that I have that, I'm going to press enter and I'm going to type in my expression. Okay, so here we go. Again, get my C by typing this until I see C and then squared. And then there was no D, so I used a T. So let me get T. And it didn't really matter what you use, just stay consistent. And then I need my C again. And now if I keep using this button, guys, I'm going to go right past C, see it? I can't use it to get the D until I arrow out. So I'm going to press this right arrow up here at the top and then I can get, well, not D actually, T, there you go. And then from that, we're going to minus C and then again, I'll have to arrow out so I can get the T that we're using for D and press T squared. Type that in and look, I still get zero didn't have to do any scratch paperwork. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. And then as you can see, I mean, we just looked at this, guys. This is a complex skill. Even when you're doing it in the calculator, it was a complex skill because I have to know how when to use minuses and when to use negatives and how to do the exponents. And oh my gosh, I, I almost got sidetracked by the fact that there was no D in my calculator and I had to use T's. You know, so practice. I highly suggest, like I said, that you do go try the advanced level practice on this lesson. So again, it is the evaluating algebraic expressions lesson from the algebra unit of the crash course. And it is the advanced level practice. And this skill of substituting uh, and simplifying, substituting and simplifying that we see in evaluating happens all over the GD in a ton of different contexts. It happens in algebra, it happens in geometry, it happens with functions, expressions, and equations. I mean, it's just a really universal skill. And so if you're gonna practice anything, practice this. I want to take the time to thank everyone who supports my work by either becoming a monthly patron on Patreon or donating a one-time cup of coffee. The difference that you're making is real and tangible. Students having access to the types of resources they need to be successful can be a game changer. When a student is able to get their GED, it can help break an entire family out of a cycle of poverty. So you are doing important work. And thank you so much.